Welcome everybody here to our next webinar at uh, JFT Bank and a warm welcome in the na name of JFT Bank as well. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski as always for those kind of webinars and now I see there's something missing on my first slide. My name? Okay, but at least I mentioned it. Um, I think on my summary page I will have my email address uh, once again. So. But nevertheless, it should be already mentioned with my really complicated last name, s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com. Later, you will see we will have an Excel sheet. And uh, if you have interest in that, no problem. Just drop me a note uh, if you would like to have uh, the slides of uh, today's webinar. Once again, same thing. Just send me an email and I will make sure that you get everything. Okay, today we have the 31st of uh, October 2019, uh, 6 o'clock uh, p.m., at least in Germany. And um, honestly, it's a little bit uh, curious, or not curious, it's a little bit strange that I'm at uh, 6, but you might imagine it has uh, just been a mistake, or not, not really a mistake, because all webinars are, are based on... Um, on GMT and uh, yeah, since we don't have uh, summertime anymore, so therefore um, my originally target was uh, seven, but now because of the different uh, summer winter adjustment, uh, yeah, it's today at six. But I think if you just follow our calendar and the entries um, after registration, then we are directly at the right uh, timetable. So I hope everybody found it right at least those who are here already, definitely um, press the button at the right time. Today's webinar, Profitable Pair Trading Strategy. And you see uh, later, as already mentioned, we will uh, mainly talk about Brent versus WTI oil. So two kind of oils. And therefore, you see already why it's called pair trading, because we trade a pair of symbols but there are other names in place for that kind of trading approach as well some call it swap trading i don't know even really why because for me swaps are just related to swap costs but anyhow or it's called ratio trades um, which is a little bit more good here uh, because later you will see we can will exactly look for the ratio of those two prices, those two symbols, and we will um, calculate the quotient of the two. So therefore, ratio trading is a good name for me as well. But anyhow, so we talk about trading a pair of symbols. But it's not just any two pairs, so we don't trade uh, the, the Euro US dollar against uh, the German DAX. So, uh, no, there's a systematic behind what kind of pairs are potential candidates for those kind of strategies. And um, that's exactly the topic of today. Uh, basically, you will learn a complete uh, trading strategy during the webinar. And, um, but it's more, as always, you know. I want to give you insight into how a trading strategy is developed and how it's developed and uh, how you can really do things by your own. And uh, yeah, that's always my personal target about that. You know, before I really start, I have always to show at least once during a webinar this kind of slide as a so-called risk disclaimer because we talk about trading, talk about trading strategies, investment trades, um, you name it. But finally, if it comes to your own trading, of course, it's on your own responsibility. Um, I think that's quite self-explaining and uh, yeah, as you know, it has to be mentioned. Anyhow, I We'll skip the other one. What we really need is this one. The definition of pair trading. I will go into more details than mentioned already in my introduction. But then we really have to talk about the, the let's call it the requirements for um, that kind of uh, strategy and what we are really doing. Uh, so it's more a description of the trading setup. And one, there's one really, um, 
not complicated step, but a very important step in doing any pair trading strategy that is finding the right lot size because we 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 trade two symbols, but we have a specific logic behind which is the the overall tra trade should be market neutral. But then it's important to get that um, that condition really uh, implemented, and therefore we have to to really look into the details of the lot size calculations um, for the two trades we finally will open and uh, so that's a quite important step otherwise we we are not market neutral and uh, that is one aspect of pair trading strategies at all which is yeah uh, some basis of that kind of strategy we will look into a ex specific excel sheet uh, which is used for that kind of uh, pair trading strategy and the other good thing is you might even exchange the two symbols by other two symbols and try other pair trading strategies by your own and i'll mention a few um, which might be a good idea to to have a follow-up on those as well so the, the the definition or the really um, basis base assumption about any pair trading um, strategy is that we trade two markets or two underlyings, two symbols, you name it, and we trade those simultaneously. So we open two trades, and it's always that we open the one as a long trade and the other. As a short trade, so that's the basic approach. And you might think, "Hey, isn't that a little bit strange?" Sounds like uh, let's focus uh, virtually on one market. Sounds like I open a long trade on DAX and a short trade on DAX simultaneously. Hmm. That doesn't sound good. Uh, the only one who would be happy about that kind of approach would be the broker, because in both for both trades the broker would earn um, the spread and uh, the commission, um, and whatever the market is doing, going up or north, you will not earn anything. At least if if you open the two trades with equal lot size, the just. Um, a virtual experiment about uh, opening a DAX long and a DAX short, maybe both with two lots. So the only one who would be happy is a broker. And whatever the market is doing, you will not earn a single cent. That's quite obvious. But for two pairs, okay. Uh, as for two two different markets, it's a little bit um, different. Let's do a virtual experiment another one let's think about we are trading the uh, dax as an index we can trade that um, at jfd and we would trade simultaneously the so-called f dax the the future on the dax and there might be situations that trading dax maybe long and the f dax short there might be special situations that that might be profitable and there's already a name for that kind of approach which is called the um how to pronounce it arbitrage arbitrage uh, i'm not sure about the pronunciation of that word but anyhow i will highlight it and you will see it here um it's exactly that in principle the two the DAX index and the FDAX should follow um, with an offset. Uh, and the offset depends simply on, on the time uh, between uh, two to uh, uh, every three months um, to point the time. But there's a constant offset uh, which is decreasing uh, over time. But anyhow, in principle, the two DAX and FDAX uh, would follow exactly the same line. But think about they would differ. If you are fast enough, you know that they, the two will come together once again. Then this long and short approach might be a quite good idea. Practically, 
nobody of us can do it. You can only do it if you have your, your trading computer as close as possible to, to uh, any, any uh, stock exchange. Um, you need really to be quite fast for that. So doing something similar, and I mentioned already one, one potential pair like um, Brent and uh, WTI, oil and not looking for something on milliseconds maybe looking for something which takes place over a couple of days then it's a similar approach like DAF, DAX, FDAX or S&P 500 and the so-called ES mini which is a future on S&P 500 that might be the, pair, the, the arbitrage trading uh, for small traders like us okay and the reason, and think again about my, my, my example, the reason that this might work is that we look for short-term inefficiencies of those two symbols. And there are even quite good stories when those uh, inefficiencies might occur and we can use those trading approaches for profitable trades uh, by our own and we don't need to do it on millisecond level definitely answer is no the setup of a pair trade is always that we look for a market neutral trade which means that we just want to catch up small inefficiencies but overall, if the market, so think about the DAX or think about the price of oil, goes up or down, that is not, not uh, our target of that kind of strategy. No, our target is that this kind of inefficiency would be recovered and not the overall trend. And therefore, this long, small, uh, long, short approach, the overall market direction, um, we simply don't care, and we uh, will even not not see it in our um, trade. So the the basic requirement about any pair trading strategy is that we need two highly correlated markets. It's quite obvious if I think about the DAX index and the FDAX future um, that those are really highly correlated, definitely. But those inefficiencies between those two, um, they they are only visible on, on a millisecond level or maybe on seconds, but not longer. So cost of trading would, would not be at least for private one not possible to to catch up those kind of um, um, <clears throat> differences but if we have an efficiency on a little bit longer time scale and it best would be on a couple of days yeah then it's really perfect and let me give you an example of, of as I mentioned already, that we will focus on um, on the two 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 oils, uh, Brent and WTI. And what you can see here is over close to seventeen years, you see the price of those two symbols, WTI and Brent. And there are even times <clears throat> you could not even distinguish in my graph between the two. Um, there was one period uh, here for three years. You see more or less there's an offset between the two and later that offset has totally recovered. So that would be an inefficiency on a real long term, but that's not the one we, we, we are heading for. Let's first start with the overall. But what we can see definitely is there's a price of the two oils um, are more or less the same. There's, an, there's always an, a small offset um, over a long period of time here. In this decade, always WTI was a little bit more expensive uh, than the other one. And if we look at the end of uh, that graph, it's vice versa. But anyhow, in general, those two have, let's say, the same price or with a close to constant offset. But now what if one 
is temporarily, let's say, getting more expensive and the other one would get cheaper. So let's assume the price at some point in time, um, and, and you see we are here looking for two decades, but uh, the price for WTI would increase and the price for Brent would decrease. Okay, doesn't happen that often, but it might happen. But what will be the reaction of the overall market if that would be for a couple of days, a couple of even weeks or a couple of months that one, one oil is getting more expensive and expensive and expensive and the other one would be cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Hmm. Since most of the, the, the industry can, can use both types of oil, they would simply buy the other one. So if one is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, everybody would jump on that oil and buying only that and not anymore the other one, which is getting more expensive, more expensive, more expensive. What will the market do? Okay. The one which has become more cheap is now getting more expensive because everybody's jumping on that, that uh, sort of oil. What will happen? The price of the two kind of oils will converge to, to each other. So, so, um, they, so they will, yeah, so the price difference is getting um, smaller and smaller and smaller. So whenever there's on one time an ink, uh, the, 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 the gap between the two prices would increase, the, the standard market reaction of that increased difference would be to equalize that that gap or not uh, that gap that that the price difference because yeah the industry can simply buy the other one so and therefore it's never possible that only one can for long term uh, get more expensive and the other for long term gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper there have been special reasons for those three years here. But you see, in general, the two prices follow the same line. And now, let me rephrase what we have had on the last slide. I called it on my last slide, inefficiencies. And that's exactly what I'm talking here. So if temporarily one oil is getting um, too expensive, then it must go the other way around. The only question is now, how can we realize that we have a special situation of that market inefficiency? But let's see, there's a clear definition for that and we will find out. Just another example, you see here in that chart the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones uh, since uh, 2000 for about seven, oh, yeah, 17 years. Hmm. Befi besides that, we have a huge offset between the two, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I used a logarithmic scale on the y-axis here. Um, honestly, would you know if I don't have the, the numbers here, um, which one is which? Okay, we all know that the Dow Jones um, is, is in, in, in uh, numbers higher than the S&P 500, but let's think about, I would have normalized the chart. Could you distinguish between S&P 500 and Dow Jones? I think the answer is no. So overall, the two follow the same line beside a constant offset. In this case, the offset is not an offset, it's a factor. Um, that's it all. So we can think about Dow Jones and S&P 500 as two correlated markets as well. We all know that it's not really markets, it's both S&P 500 and Dow Jones are <clears throat> just a selection of United States stock companies. The S&P 500, there are 500 companies creating the S&P 500. 
and the Dow Jones, yeah, that are 30, 30 companies, which let's call it, they, if we add them up, that gives the Dow Jones more or less. It's not really adding up, but you know what I mean. Okay, and now why we do not we, we do have that kind of correlation? Okay, both is the US markets. In principle, we could think about that the selection of the 30 might behave different than the selection of the 500. But can you think that um, for one year, like financial crisis, one goes down and the other one would go up? <clears throat> that would be a crazy situation. So highly correlated markets. And therefore, this is another good example to use it as a base um, for a pair trading strategy. I mentioned already that we can see within that chart, we have the Dow Jones and the red and the S&P 500. There's a, there's a more or less constant factor between the two, which in a logarithmic scale is a constant offset. Hey, then let's create that quotient. Therefore, the other name for the strategy, ratio strategy. So we have here S&P 500 divided by Dow Jones. Therefore, uh, we have numbers uh, which are uh, close to 0 0.11, 0 0.12. Uh, so it's about a factor of um, eight, nine, uh, something like that between the two. And now we have a more clear picture about what I mean with they follow the same line. Let's think just a long-term behavior. And it just let's set up virtually a line like 0.11 as being, assuming that is the, the, the real and good ratio between the two, S&P 500 and Dow Jones. And now you can see already how the strategy would work. When we are highly deviated on one side of that, let's call it the, the fair ra ratio, just uh, for the next couple of minutes here, uh, the 0.11. If we are far away from that standard ratio, that's a trigger that we would open up our pair trade. And the too expensive one, we open a short, and the too cheap one, we open a long trade. And the only thing now, from on, from now onwards, is whether the market goes up or down, we don't care because we have a market neutral trade uh, between the two, and therefore, whether there's a financial crisis, yes or no, we don't care. Um, the only thing which matters is that that ratio comes back to its normal value. And if so, we have a perfect and profitable trade without any additional market risk. Even a financial crisis would not have an impact on our trade. So that's quite cool. But now, what is the downside? Is there a risk? Yes, there's a risk. Let's assume that we open the trade on an almost, in, in the historical chart, perfect point in time uh, for about here, that 2006. If that ratio would have increased, 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 then we would have lost money more and more and more. So if the, the um, assumption that we, we go back to the fair value is not right, then of course we have a trade which will just create losses and losses and losses. But if we have the situation, and we will look not that long term anymore if, when we come to the final trading strategy, then it really works. But that's a 
basic thing. We create that ratio. And here we have the same picture uh, for uh, Brent and uh, WTI. And here you can see for a long um, long term, um, that was a little bit above, the ratio was a little bit above one, let's say for this decade, and then it's below one for that decade. So to use the one as a fair value, that will not work. We we want to have that kind of strategy a little bit more on, on short term. So a couple of days should be our trading time and not uh, just uh, years. Uh, so within that, that wiggling around, we should find our potentials. And you see, the ratio here is really getting up and down. We can't see it really um, without zooming into to that chart. But what we see is that we have some kind of oscillating behavior of that ratio. And if we could use those ups and downs as a start and end for pair trading, um, for a pair trade, then this might be something really good. And that's what we are really heading for. So what is a trading approach? And the, what we will use is just one additional idea. So instead of looking like like virtually to, to a virtual value like 0.11 uh, for Dow Jones and S&P 500 as being the fair value of uh, that ratio or the about one um, on a long term for Brent and WTI, Let's create that fair value simply with an EMA in that ratio. Why not using just an, an EMA for the ratio? We are used to have EMAs on price charts like whatever. Um, even in Euro, US dollar, we can use an EMA as a trend filter or whatever. Let's just use that EMA on the ratio as being the fair value. So, and now strategy is more, more or less already completely described, not numbers, but, but uh, from its characteristics. If we are far away from the ratio, <laughs> that's a good thing. Then we are not um, talking about a single symbol. No, we are talking about the ratio. If that ratio deviates by far, and we have to define what is by far compared to the EMA, then we know we have a special situation. Oh, not wir, that's German. Um, we have a special situation now. And that's exactly what I showed already a little bit in my chart. We have later better examples. If we have such a special situation that the actual ratio is deviating from the EMA on that ratio, then we have an extreme situation, which means one is very expensive and the other one is cheap compared to the ratio. And the logic for what short and what long is sometimes a little bit tricky, I know. But um, if you think more in terms like expensive, and cheap, then you know exactly what you, you have to trade short and what you have to trade long. Of course, the one which is too expensive compared to the other one, this one is traded short and the other one, the too cheap one, is traded long because we target that the ratio will come back to its normal value. And then, yeah, that is the exact. Uh, direction we need for the too expensive and the too cheap one. So the ratio should return to its normal value, which in more more chart behavior means that the ratio of the EMA crosses zero once again. You will see later in my chart what I really mean with that. So in principle, it's a mean reversion strategy on a ratio. That's all. And let me just, because if you are 
sometimes um, in my webinars, if I would simply say we have a mean reversal strategy on a forex pair, it's exactly the same. Now you see, I mentioned on a forex pair because we c we cannot trade euro, we cannot trade US dollar. What we can trade is euro US dollar, which is a quotient of those two currencies. So a mean reversion strategy on a forex pair is exactly the same than a ratio strategy on Brent WTI. The only thing is there's no direct symbol for that. So if JFD or any other broker would offer the symbol Brent divided by WTI, uh, then I could make the same kind of webinar and describe the same strategy. The only difference is I would call that strategy not a pair trading strategy. I would call it a mean reversion strategy. So you see, it's exactly the same. The only thing we, um, is we, we don't have such a symbol like Brent divided by WTI or <clears throat> Dow Jones divided by S&P 500. If so, there would be a re mean reversion strategy and we would do exactly the same. So you see the kind of similarity is uh, really quite obvious. Um, the other good thing overall is in this case, the overall market, we don't care. Uh, think about uh, Dow Jones and, and, and uh, uh, S&P 500, then it's more yeah, uh, easy to, to realize what I mean with market neutrality. And that's exactly what we have uh, to, to introduce here as well, because finally we want to open two trades, but those two trades have to be market neutral. And it's not just, and therefore I, I go here for the uh, example S&P 500 and um, Dow Jones. You know that the two prices are totally different um, by about a factor of nine or eight. Um, so we all know that if I trade one lot S&P 500 and that this is completely different like trading one lot Dow Jones, you may think, hey, isn't it about the same? For both, it's um, one point is one dollar, in this case because of dollars. No, it's not the same. Um, they have different prices. So in <clears throat> think about earnings like both go you, you have two you go for two long trades s p 500 and uh, dow jones uh, you open one lot uh, trade for both and now i have to think more in percent um so if both would increase the price by 10 percent then Definitely, you would earn much more with your one lot long Dow Jones, because if the Dow Jones goes up by 10%, that uh, would be a couple of uh, thousand points, um, which is perfect if you have uh, such a trade. But so you would earn much more because the Dow Jones uh, is more expensive. On the other hand, I know what you think. Uh, it's not the same number. Yes, you're right. So we would have to, to, to use more lots for the S&P 500 trade. And then thinking about um, in, in margins or in, in risk, uh, then you know uh, quite well what I mean. So how can we adjust the two trades so that we get the market neutral um, if we want to go short on S&P 500 and long on Dow Jones. And the, the final answer is just that equation, but, but let me just use in this case that equation because that gives you the directly as a number of lots. You only have to set uh, the lots for one and you get the lots for the other one. Since the trade should be market neutral, we can simply multiply the number of lots with price of product A, and that should equal 
the number of lots of product B and the price of product B. Think about Dow Jones and S&P 500. Then I hope it becomes quite obvious. So we would have to pay uh, to to buy about nine times more lots for an S&P 500 trade than the Dow Jones. So it's exactly the ratio between the two. If so, let's think about that, that factor of nine. Then, if it's exact, it's a factor of nine between the two prices, S&P 500 and Dow Jones, and we open, then now nine lots short S&P 500 and one lot long Dow Jones. If nothing goes wrong with uh, that kind of ratio, if the market get collapsed in the next crisis, we would not see because then, for example, the S and P five hundred would go down by ten percent, and the Dow Jones would go down by ten percent. But since our trade is market neutral, we would not earn and not lose anything. But that was not the target. It's only that the market the trade is market neutral. The, the, the really point, the, the good point is, we we open the trade uh, just. Um, um, when we have such an extreme situation. And now I will show you an Excel sheet and then you can see how the uh, strategy is, for example, if you really developed. And let me first in, in, enlarge a little, uh, yeah, a little bit. I just want you to, to, I want to guide you quickly through that Excel sheet. If you are interested in really the details, um, you can have it and uh, no problem, just send me an email. But um, for, for all the others, uh, it might be not that interesting for everybody if I go really into the details of the Excel sheet. Anyhow, what I have here is I started with the two prices, WTI and Brent. So within, we have both prices uh here and the table and the only thing you have really to 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 care if you create such an excel sheet is um that you have really always the same date uh for the two symbols because you you download the data uh, somewhere and maybe one of those price uh, series have just an additional day the other has not so then they got um they are not anymore synchronize the two series so that's the really thing you have to, to care then it's quite easy building the ratio of the two creating an ema on that ratio and now just um subtract them so ratio minus the eml value starting with a zero here so then we have the deviation between the actual ratio and the ema and if we have some certain threshold, which is in this case so just a 1.1, <clears throat> we get a trigger for a trade. Let me explain it a little bit more. Um, that, that curve here, we have had already more or less uh, because that was a ratio. But now we have that ratio with an EMA. And let me let me just change uh, the EMA period, uh, then it becomes a little bit more obvious what I mean if we have special situations. So you think, let me even go further uh, up with the EMA. So the extreme situation that we have huge deviations of the actual ratio in the EMA, you can already see now here with your blank eyes, uh, blanket eyes. And let me zoom in to one one case um, first, because then it's just the beginning of the graph. Um, it's the same graph, but only the first 190 days. I hope it will stop now. Yeah, now it stopped. So we have the EMA. And now you can see those extreme situations. So we have a deviation of more than 5% between the actual EMA and the, uh, the actual ratio and the EMA on that ratio. You see that? difference. And 
the ratio comes back. So if we would have opened our market neutral trade here and we cross the EMA line once again on that ratio, that would be the trigger for closing the trade. We have a profitable trade per definition. And we open the trade as a market neutral trade. That's really cool. And that's exactly how the strategy works. And uh, let me see, I have even built that, that graph here. Um, so now the next step was building the difference between the actual EMA and the EMA, which is plotted here. And I think I have the same uh, zoomed once again in the next one. And, and then we are here. So here we have just for, for a few days, and now I went for the uh, last 180 days here. Um, no, it's not really the last one. Oh, hopefully it stops now. Um, I'm not still uh, um, pressing any. Uh, now I go back here. So it's just another um, case here, 180 days. And you see what really means if we look for um, the difference between the ratio and the EMA, that we can see those huge uh, deviations. And now we have those through threshold lines, which we might use for, for automatically analyzing that kind of trading strategy. Think about we would use uh, the 0 0.02 plus minus. Okay, then first time we would have opened a trade would be here because if we exceed that threshold, so we open our pair trade, then we wait for uh, crossing uh, the zero line once again. And that would be the, the ending point of any trade. First trade. Then we would have opened the vice versa uh, trading direction for the two symbols and closing. Opening the next trade would be here. And now we would be for a couple of days in the minus, because if if the uh, ratio goes up and up and up, we are on a losing situation. But you see what happens finally, we, we go come back here. And then, we, not in all cases, we get profitable trades that uh, uh, depends on some further details, but that's the complete strategy. And now let's have a view on what we can earn percentage wise. Just, and you can even play with that kind of Excel sheet if you uh, want to. Uh, you can play with the two marked um, um, fields and with the EMA period. And the other one is here just the threshold. In this case, the threshold is not programmed in terms like I described it at the graph, like uh, 0.02, it's just a multiple, oops, uh, it's a multiple on the standard deviation. But anyhow, that's not really important. Um, those two parameters are the degrees of freedom of that strategy, and we don't have any anymore. It's just the EMA period and the threshold. And the, Threshold here in my case is, is as a multiple of the standard deviation of uh, the difference, but that's only for mathematical reasons. I first have here the trades in percent because it's easier to calculate. And what we have uh, in this case, we have 100 trades with those two uh, numbers, 105 trades, and we have the individual equity for the Brent and the WTI. And, um, but the individual equity doesn't count. What we really want to have is the sum. And this one is the yellow line. And you see, we get a steady line going north. Hey, it's not that bad. And I have already included the spread because if I would not include any spread, um, of the two, uh, we would even earn more money. So 
but anyhow, uh, we have to pay the spread, therefore it should be included. But I know that nobody is really interested in earning some percentage numbers. Um, no, we want to translate those trades into um, real dollars uh, as well. I did it within the Excel sheet uh, because one point is um, the one the one hundred dollar. Uh, I used uh, the market neutral condition. Uh, even I applied what is the minimum lot size, and in order to calculate the lot sizes, uh, to get it at least as close to market neutral as we are. And let's have a view on what would be the latest uh, combination. Would be like point nine and point eight uh, lots in order to reflect that there is a price difference. Uh, we could use some other numbers here, uh, then it would uh, increase, no decrease. Uh, let me, then we would be, um, we would have bigger trades at all. It's just a multiple on, on all trades. Um, we would be a little bit more exact in order to, to reflect the different prices. Now we would buy 18.2 lots for the one and 16.7 for the other. And, um, but the overall risk would be higher and so on and so forth. So the Excel sheet can even calculate real trades out of uh, that kind of uh, strategy. Uh, if you see such um, division by zero, then that's okay because we don't have a trade um, here. So uh, first trade that would start when we have an entry. So here you see we have entries for trades, we have exits for trades, and everything is taken care of within the Excel sheet. If you have questions, just um, Send me a line. So first you will get the Excel sheet. Um, and if, if you don't understand something, uh, no problem. I will, I will help you um, with the Excel sheet. But you can see what we can achieve with such a simple strategy. And let me change the numbers once again. Uh, smaller EMAs, now we see, okay, we get more percentage. So we have more trades. Um, um, we have more profits, but unfortunately it went south uh, here. Uh, let me see, that looks a little bit better. We have now in, in some more um, profits. Uh, we have still 277 trades uh, within that uh, timeline here. That's about 20 years. So it's a little bit more than 10 trades a year. Uh, well, not so bad. Uh, so it's strategy, um, we don't are uh, in trades that often, just for a couple of days, and then we go out and wait for the next extreme situation. And honestly, you could see those extreme situations, even if you look directly to the two, two prices of WTI uh, and Brent, um, you just only have to, to, to plot them um, next to each other, even better uh, above each other, uh, then you, you can see whenever you have a situation like uh, one has a yellow, uh, a green candle and the other one has a red candle, that you more or less are directly close to an extreme situation. And um, then you can trade it quite, quite manually and not that uh, automatic here. But that's a complete strategy. It's really quite easy. Let me give you some hints how you can use the same kind of strategy uh, for, for other symbols as well. This was um, WTI and, um, and Brent. But as you, you might remember, I mentioned already the base requirement. The basis requirement is that we have highly correlated markets. And you might have even what I call a story behind. I mentioned the story behind Brent and WTI because you can use, not everybody can use this two sorts of oil uh, simultaneously, but more or less. If one is getting too expensive, everybody would buy the other one. So that's just a standard market behavior. Uh, so that's a real good story. 
Um, we have a similar story on S&P 500 and Dow Jones, but this story is not as good as the Brent WTI story. Why? Since Dow Jones has only 30 symbols, in principle, it's possible that for whatever reason, that kind of selection is just having the winners and all the losers. And um, the S&P 500 has, yeah, let's really say the average because it's that huge, highly distributed, diversified about four, 500 different symbols. Uh, so the story is not as good. Or um, we, we might use a pair gold and silver. So two metals are gold and platinum or platinum. Um, yes, story is not that bad. At least the latter one, um, like gold and uh, platinum, is uh, not that bad. Gold and silver. Hmm. Gold is, is two things. It's a little bit an industry product, but on the other hand, uh, glossary. Hmm. Silver is more an industry product. So it's a little bit difficult. But there are other things like correlated stocks. Think about two companies like Bayer and uh, BASF. Or you take two, two car companies. For example, I'm a German. Uh, so let's think about German car companies like um, BMW and Daimler. So overall, they are operating in um, the car industry. Good. So if there, that kind of industry is behaving well, it will go up, and both will participate: W, uh, BMW, and Daimler. If the market goes down, okay, no problem. So that's okay because we have always market neutral trades, so that that story works. Temporarily, one might be better than the other. And then the other is catching up. Maybe the one is first introducing a new car, getting more attraction, whatever. That kind of story can be used as well. So that are highly correlated markets. And you can use the same Excel sheet for uh, uh, investigations of those pairs as well. That brings me already to the end of the webinar. So pair trading. It's really a good variant for any trading activities. And the real good thing is that we have those market neutral trades. So we don't participate in the overall market behavior. It's only those deviations between the two which trigger the trades. If we have an extreme situation that one of our two highly correlated markets is too expensive compared to the other one, that's a trigger. And that's starting a trade. And then we just hope for everything is getting to its normal situation once again. And then we have a profitable trade. That's the idea. On the other hand, it's just a mean reversion strategy. So if I would start it, everything on Forex, then I would call the same strategy mean reversion because it's already a, a uh, something like a pair trade, euro, US dollar, both are currencies, and we have the quotient, uh, what we just call the exchange rate. So then it's a mean reversion strategy. So it's quite simple to, simple to derive and even simple to implement that kind of strategy. And it only works if you have highly correlated markets and they keep being correlated for a longer time then we can um, have that kind of successful uh, trading approach. That's all. And here's my contact. S. Friedrichowski, really complicated last name, so just call me Stefan whenever you um, or drop me a line. <clears throat> so S. Friedrichowski at jftbank.com. And I will make sure that you get slides if you want. And uh, if you want, you can have the Excel sheet as well. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. We have another one already in about two weeks. Um, that's uh, you, you will find on uh, the internet uh, and uh, at the JFD homepage. And the recordings of that webinar you will find from tomorrow onwards, as always, at the YouTube channel of JFD and 
systems. That's exactly uh, the keyword. If you just looking, just press at Google JFD and YouTube, and you will be directed exactly to the YouTube channel. You will find other recordings of any webinars, uh, webinars there as well. Um, not only mine, uh, from other speakers as well. Hope you see you again in two weeks. Enjoy your time. It's a little bit too early to say enjoy the weekend, but there's one day left. It's uh, just a Friday. Okay. Have a good time. Bye-bye.